What's up everyone? We are back with Naveen Jain. We are gonna be talking about metatranscriptomics, chronic diseases, how illness is optional. So tell us about that. As we were discussing that technology finally exists now for us to be able to understand what is going on inside your gut. Until metatranscriptomics, we could never figure out what actually is being done inside our gut. All we could do was find out what organisms may possibly exist. Most companies who are doing microbiome testing are in fact using such ancient technology that, in, that essentially doesn't tell you much. So most of the companies when you go out and get the microbiome test done, they use something called 16S sequencing. So if you're using, you go to anyone's website, the minute you hear the word 16S, run away. That's a scam. <laughs> Right. But most people have been, that's all they do. 99% of the companies that today they do the microbiome sequencing use 16S. So that's a complete waste of money, run away. So companies like Ubiome, American Gut Project, Genoa, companies like Biome, all of these guys are just completely scamming people. Right? Damn, and tell us just a quick bit yeah. on so 16S. What is, yeah. what is 16S? 16S is a fraction of a gene that only exists in the bacteria. So by definition, you cannot see any viruses, which are phages, viruses, RNA viruses, yeast, fungus, mold. You can't see any one of that stuff, right? And then the 16S is also has a small variable portion that can show you what genus this bacteria comes from. Not the species, not not a strain, what genus. At a genus level, everyone, every human being has the same genuses. It's like saying the genus of India is there are some men, there are some women, there are some young people, there are some old people, same as America. Mm -hmm. And some people say, oh, but this genus is, this is higher than that. But there are more women in India than they are in America. <coughs> and so this is really where they'll come down to say, hey, there are more women in India than they are in America and there are more crimes in India, so women are criminal. And that's really all they could do. They say Provertala is too high and they are sick, so must Provertala is really the bad one, right? Or the Fermicutes are too high <coughs> or Bacteroidetes are too high and somehow that's why you're sick. At that level, everyone has the same genesis, so there's nothing you can get out of it, right? Then, so you can't see any species, you can't see any strain, or worse, you don't even know what is being done. Are these guys producing the stuff that's good? Are they producing the stuff that's bad? And within the each genus, as you can imagine, it could be a man, but man could be Paul, it could be Alan, it could be John. Even then it doesn't tell you that. Then you say, well, it could be a plumber, it could be an electrician, <coughs> it could be an entrepreneur. Now you say, oh, I see that. But the main thing is, even though the Paul may be an entrepreneur, that simply tells you what is he capable of doing. It doesn't even tell you what it's doing. doing. And uh -huh. that's where the real advantage comes in, is when someone can say, he is working on producing things AI. And is this AI good or bad? Is He's working on building carpentry. Or carpentry. carpentry yeah. Now, is it yeah. good or bad? Right. So my point is that what really comes down to is what is being done and that's called functional microbiome and mm -hmm. there is no company on earth other than one company called Wyom that does that period. This functional microbiome. Yeah. So the normal 16S sequencing is doing it from a, oh, you have this many men and this many women, this yeah. many old people, this many young people, and that doesn't give you what that young person is doing at that moment in the ecosystem. And the, you don't even know in that young person, is it Paul, Alan, or John? Is it an entrepreneur or versus a plumber or electrician? And then even though he's an electrician, what actually he's doing? Yeah. Right. Yep. Uh, same type of things. Now, there is other technology called metagenomics. Metagenomics is really called DNA sequencing. At a DNA sequencing level, you can see all the organisms. But the problem again is you can see every organism. So it is substantially better than 16S. But you still can't figure out what they are doing. You can say what they are capable of doing. And the same person may be capable of doing 10 different things, right? So what we see as by looking at the functional microbiome or metatranscriptomics, which is called RNA sequencing, 
RNA, the good thing about RNA is you only see the organisms that are alive. You don't see the dead stuff. Mm. So when you do the DNA sequencing metagenomics, anytime you eat any food, it has the DNA. So you get plant DNA and you get the meat DNA. And when you look at the microbiome, you see so much of false positive because you see a whole bunch of stuff that's coming through and it's all dead. Uh -huh. So you don't see any, you see a whole bunch of dead stuff and you have no idea are they actually in your gut or they're simply passing through. And in the metatranscriptist, the RNA sequencing is what enables you to see the alive. Yes. So RNA, as you can see, is really replication of DNA. That means you only see RNA when things are replicating. And alive. And they're alive yeah. because it's a short cycle. That means if it's not alive, it's going to be dead. Yeah. There's no, no RNA being produced anymore. It's not yeah. replicating, yeah, yeah. right? And by looking at the transcript, it shows you exactly what, what is being doing. produced, okay. right? Okay. So think about it. The 10 different organisms could produce exactly the same thing. So if you're simply looking at the organism level, you can say, well, Alan has completely different set of organism than Paul does, but both have diabetes. So diabetes can't have anything to do with the organism because both are different. However, what they don't see at that level until you have metatranscriptomics, you say, oh my God, both of them are producing LPS and that LPS is causing inflammation that's causing the insulin resistance and that's the reason they're both diabetes, diabetic, mm -hmm. which is because organisms may be different, but they're producing the same things. Also, the same organism can produce multiple different things. That means the same Paul one day could be building a chair and next day he's fixing the fan. Huh. <laughs> right? Because man, they're capable of doing multiple things depending on what incentive they have. They got paid to build a chair. He said, I'll go build a chair. Next they say, hey, can you come and... <laughs> Maybe depending on what food we brought into our ecosystem. Exactly. They change the, what is happening with the RNA. You are very bright. I mean, so Alan, what happens is think of our gut microbiome as a computer. So information processing unit and food is the information. When we change the information, it changes what comes out. Interestingly, the microbiome, since they live in very close proximity, there's something, and now the science is start, scientists are starting to discuss is what they call the horizontal gene transfer or the gene shedding. That means the organisms are starting to share their genes. That means I can now, if I am only eating one type of food, and there are certain organisms that can digest the food and others are not getting fed, they start to share the gene that can actually start to digest and they both can start to now do the same thing. Yeah. Right? So it's very interesting is there is, there is gene transfer that happens or a lot of the times to survive, they say in this environment for Alan, I'm just not getting this food. So they start shedding the genes that are capable of digesting the food. He say, we don't need it. It's never coming. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So people who eat, who are vegetarian, they start shedding genes that actually in their microbiome digest meat. And that's why when they do eat meat down they, the line, they get sick. They get sick, right? Interestingly, yeah. what also we found is that we are able to, in fact, not only understand what they're doing, but we find the people who are different are able to process the things very differently. So what I'm trying to say is, we see the people who are vegetarian, we see in their gut microbiome, they're able to take carbohydrate and turn them into branch chain amino acid, which is the precursor to protein. So the, your gut microbiome can convert carbohydrates into protein. That is not something people would have ever thought, right? Our microbiome mm. are detoxifier. In a sense, if you live in an area where there is a lot of toxin, like for example, or you eat food that have certain amount, certain toxins, like MSG. The people who eat a lot of MSG, their gut microbiome evolves to take the MSG and detoxify it into some completely benign. And they're totally fine. Mm -hmm. You and I eat MSG, we don't have those microbiome mm -hmm. and we get headache. Mm -hmm. right? So the point is, it is our gut microbiome that is essentially constantly changing and evolving and adapting as we are adapting our 
diets. And this illness is optional mentality is that I, I go through the process of Viome and understanding my metatranscriptomics, then I get this sort of dynamic understanding of what's going on in my microbiome. And then as I've been using Viome, I've been able to, at the grocery store, at the let's restaurant. Let's separate them. So I'll, let's yeah, focus let's... this segment just on the technology, and then I'll come back about okay. how chronic diseases happen and how do you prevent them and how do you make illness optional, right? Okay. So in this one, I just wanted to focus on what are the technologies that allow us to analyze what's happening inside the gut. And Let's do, do it yeah. yeah. So understanding the functional microbiome is the key. And there's only one company on the planet that does that today is a company called Viome, V-I-O-M-E. And we essentially are able to look at every single thing what your gut organisms are doing, not what they are capable of doing or what they could have done, what they're actually are doing. doing. Yeah. And that is the key because you want Let's to know. Let's talk about how. Let's yeah. talk more about how. Yeah. Okay. So, so how we do that is we are able to... Uh, Take a small, a small amount of your poop, able to do a complete RNA sequencing. That RNA sequencing tells us all the different transcripts of different organisms. Mm -hmm. And then we put them in a different pathways and say, oh, how much of butyrate, which is really, really good nutrient for the body. It's a short chain fatty acid. Mm -hmm. It really fixes your gut lining. It really, you know, improves the lots of conditions in the body. It's a good nutrient. Butyrate. Butyrate. Yeah. And we see how much of that is being produced or how much of things that are really harmful to you, such as lipopolysaccharide, LPS. If you're producing a lot of LPS and not producing enough butyrate, you're guaranteed that you're going to have a lot of inflammation in your body. And, and is this fairly, even though our microbiomes are about 95% different, different, is this pretty sim similar is you want low LPS and you want high butyrate? Yes, yes. That's similar. That okay. is similar. So LPS is a compound that's very inflammatory. And when you have a lot of inflammation in your gut, it is going to bound to do not only have the gut lining starts to become permeable and you get Ugh. leaky guts, right? Ugh. And then also the LPS, when it goes in your body, it causes the immune system to react so heavily. And the first thing the immune system does is causes inflammation. In fact, LPS is so deadly. If you were to take a pure 90% LPS and if you are exposed to it, you'll be dead in 30 seconds. <laughs> Whoa. Right. It is very highly inflammatory compound. Right. So, so, met, so going back to it, the way to analyze microbiome used to be culture. And the culture could only look at the microorganisms that grow in oxygen. That means all of the anaerobic, which is I would say majority of our gut organisms in our gut are anaerobic. We never saw them. Then came about the 16S. And that is a complete, as we discussed, it just really, really doesn't do much. Matter genomics is better than 16S, but it only tells you potentially what can happen. And you get a lot of false positive on all the dead stuff that actually is not in your gut. And the most advanced technology really is the matter transcriptomics that's looking at your RNA, only looks at the stuff that is alive, but more importantly is doing the functional aspect of what is actually being produced. Because what matters to the human body is what is being produced, not what could have been produced. Yep. That's good. That's really important understanding of metatranscriptomics and what Viome is doing.